Hi, my name is Ross Astutley, World Leader Pressure Point Fighting, National Boxing Coach for the whole of Cambodia, Martial Arts Hall of Fame, Combat Hall of Fame, and a whole host of other stuff. Anyway, let's get on with today's lesson. Hello again. Right, uppercut. Now, okay, some, in the strictest sense, the uppercut, as it's classically taught, comes straight up like this, in the strictest sense of the, yeah, how it's taught. So it does come straight up like that, I know, but I don't teach it like that and I don't like it like that because for me, it just doesn't work nice. I like an angle with it. So that's just the way I like to do it. So if you do it this way, that's fine. I'm not gonna argue with it, but try it at a 45 degree. I seem to get a lot more power doing it that way. So hopefully you will as well. Now, one of the biggest problems I see with uppercuts, and I'm gonna exaggerate it to, to make the point, okay? A massive exaggeration is that people are here and they go, like that. Again, massive exaggeration, of course. So the biggest problem people have with the uppercut is that they, they don't set themselves up correctly for it or as best as they could. I won't say incorrectly because if it lands, it's correct. Isn't it? But they're not setting themselves for it. So they, they tend to be, and then it has to drop their arm in order to do the uppercut. Now there's times when you do that, of course, and every, every time you teach something in boxing, you say it's a golden rule, like it's a golden rule to keep your guard up. But there's times when you don't. Yeah. It's a golden rule not to cross your legs, but there's times when you have to. So there's rules and there's rules, all right? So general golden rule, is you don't drop your hand down to throw it. So general golden rule is that you turn your body and you sink. Now, for my mind, one of the best was, was Mike Tyson, just watch his uppercuts, absolutely lethal. And Lennox Lewis, a different approach, but absolutely lethal uppercuts. So for my mind, watch those guys. And yeah, if you can do it as well as them, well, fair play to you. So, what it is, is to set up this rotational torque in the body so that you're, think of it like a, a screw going like this, going up and across at 45 degrees, so that when you're down here, ready to throw, as your body moves, there's a relationship between your elbow and your hip in so much as they don't really want to be apart from each other. They don't want to be doing this. They want to be connected so that as you drive your body in that spiral up and through at 45 degrees, it drives your strike so that you're keeping yourself as compact as possible. Caveat on that, if you're at the right angle and you can see your opponent but he can't see you then dropping your arm doesn't matter too much but that's a different story again general rule don't drop your arm to do it but if you've got the angle it doesn't matter we'll cover that in a sec so sink low turn off get low using your whole body from the feet all the way up and your legs do all the work not your arm your legs drive up your body rotates, that rotational torque going up 45 degrees straight through the target. Remembering that it's the acceleration through the target that creates the knockout. Okay, so you turn and through. Turn and through. Other side. Now, you sometimes get the illusion that the back hand, that the hand goes back because why? Because the body goes forward. So I'll exaggerate it to make a point. If I'm here, look, and the body goes first, it's the illusion that that's come back, but it hasn't actually moved. See? It hasn't moved. 
exaggerated to make a point. So oftentimes, people will say, no, no, you moved your hand back. Well, it's not the case, it, hopefully, or well, not much anyway. But when you're here and your body moves, it's the illusion that that's gone back, but it hasn't moved, look. So if I place it on the bag to show you what I mean, if I'm here with it and I move, that hasn't moved, but it looks like it's gone back, okay? So and it's that drive that gives you the uppercut. Now, you can mix in all sorts of footwork with it, all sorts of jumping into it, jumping across with it, on the spot with it, taking angles with it, because you can move, you can move around the back with the uppercut, you can move across the back, all sorts of things. You just do what's appropriate at that moment in time against that particular opponent or on that particular bag. Sometimes you can stay where you are, sometimes you have to move to the outside, sometimes you have to move to the inside. Or you want to move inside, outside, wherever you want, okay, to set up your next shot. Because you might be setting up your big overhand or whatever it may be. But use your, your brain, use your imagination, use a bit of thought, okay? Practice it that way. Let me know how you get on. I know it works, works for me. And I'm old and fat, so it works for me, it should work for you. See you later. If you like what I teach and you like my style of teaching, why not hit the like, share, subscribe, and even make a comment if you want. I'll try and answer them. And if you want a load more lessons, Dip on down to my site, sign up for free, and it opens up all the unlisted ones on the old YouTube. I'll see you down there.